Hey friends, it's Tracy. In today's video, I have some fall DIYs to share with you, of course, with some rustic country charm. Today, guys, is a special day because I'm teaming up with my sweet friend, Linda, who is Faith Chick 777 DIY by Design. We're bringing you some fall DIYs. I'll tell you about that a little bit more later, but let's go ahead and get into today's projects. Okay, for this project, I'm using a four of these wood pumpkins from Dollar Tree to orange and to off-white. These are the scrapbook papers I'm using, as well as some parchment paper. That is what I'm going to be uh, printing on. And then uh, I was going to uh, hand letter with my black sharpie marker, but I switched later to my paint. The tree stumps uh, came from Dollar Tree as well because I wanted a little longer uh, pump, uh, stem for my pumpkin. And so I just take my sanding sponge and just get off the majority of the glitter. Uh, some of these have glitter and some of them don't. So, you know, just depending on which ones you're ha you have and that kind of thing. So that some of those sticks at the, the stems of the pumpkins were a little bit hard to get off. So I just took my heat gun and just kind of melted that uh, so that I could get off that pesty sticker as well as the, uh, you know, wood piece of the uh, uh, pumpkin because I wanted to use some things that I already had. All right, so I just traced that out and, uh, you know, I have two of each pattern. And again, all of this uh, cardstock uh, scrapbook paper came from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to use the heat transfer method and uh, I've shared this many times because it's my favorite way. I just put some Mod Podge on my pumpkins and let that dry completely. Then I cut out all my paper. I just use my vintage photo distressing ink to give it some color on the ends as well as my black sharpie marker because yeah guys y'all hear me all the time say the beauty is in the details and I love my doodles and my squiggles and so I do that as well as some white paint to give it some uh, squiggles around the edges. Now what I'm doing is just taking my box blade and just going around the edges just to roughen it up a little bit. I just feel that it gives a bit more rustic touch to it and uh, some you know paper is a little bit different uh, the striped uh, kind of or the plaid or whatever kind of did a little bit better than the other one so anyway but I know it's there and it makes me feel better all right so now my Mod Podge is uh, dry on my pumpkin so I just take my parchment paper and my little mini iron I use a Cricut mini press and I just uh, uh, the parchment paper acts as a buffer and so I just iron that on just to make sure that everything is down nice and secure and uh, we're ready to move on to the lettering okay so this uh, cardstock it's like a parchment uh, color and so it has like a white core to it and so what that means is that when I tear it you can kind of see a little bit of the white and I like that. And so I'm just kind of tearing it toward me, like toward my body so that I get that white edge. And that is what I'm going to be putting my letters on to make the fall for my blocks. I'm just using a quarter inch flat paintbrush to make my letters. Now it's taken me many years to kind of practice and learn how uh, to do my letters and, you know, make the happy dots. I love my happy dots and all of that stuff. And so I do appreciate a lot of friends loving this style of font. Now on my blog, I have found uh, some fonts, some free fonts that I have a list for. I will leave a link for that. It is in my link tree, which is in the description box. If you look for uh, free handwritten fonts, I have, you know, compiled a list of free fonts that have like a dot to them. And so then you can, you know, download them onto your computer. You can print them out. You can, uh, you know, practice that way. Uh, but back to the fall blocks, if you don't want this or you don't like this style of font, you can always use stickers or you can use something else that suits your style. I'll use my Vintage Photo Distress ink just to go around the edges of each of the, uh, you know, little letters and just to give it some, you know, rustic uh, touches to it as well as, you know, provide depth and that kind of thing that I like for my projects. Then I'm just going to uh, crinkle them back and forth because what I'm looking for is 
to get the most aged look out of this paper and this is how I achieve it. And so I kind of want the letters to uh, pop up, like kind of stick up a bit. I don't want it to be glued down flat. And so by crinkling the paper, I kind of achieve the look that I'm going for. All right, so to uh, kick up the letters a notch a bit more, just to bring them out, I just take some white paint and a liner brush and just put a little comma in each of the happy dots just to give it, uh, you know, just a little bit of extra touch. And so then also I take my black sharpen marker. I'm using a fine point just to go around and just give it some doodling. Uh, now, sometimes I use two uh, sharpie markers when it depends on what look I'm going for. And so I started with the fine Sharpie marker and then I go back with an ultra fine Sharpie marker, which is a little thinner. And then I give it a little doodling on the inside. And of course I need to do my paint splattering. I love my paint splatter. I do uh, black first, then I'll go back over it with white. Uh, if you like to paint splatter, just make sure your surface is covered and that you run the stick over the bristles, whatever brush you're using toward your body so that the paint projects on to whatever, you know, your surface is. All right. So then now I'm just kind of going through this bag of stems and just figuring out, I'm decided to go with the longer stem because I want it to, I'm going to put a bow around the stem and make a bow. And so I wanted them to stick up a little bit. And so I just did that. Um, and I secured those just with some E6000 as well as hot glue, just to make sure that they were very secure down. Okay, so then uh, before I glue down my letters, what I'm going to do, I want to make my bows, and so I'm not quite sure of the placement, so I'm just ripping some muslin fabric. Uh, I love that, and so uh, that's going to be in my bow. Now, this green ribbon came from Hobby Lobby. I love it so much, and that's going to kind of act like my leaves for my pumpkins, and so I cut off a piece of that and then cut it in half uh, since I'm making some, you know, these smaller pumpkins. I'm also using some pit berries that came from Hobby Lobby as well as a couple of different trims. I'm also using some of this jewelry cording to add a small thin bow. Uh, for the stems of my pumpkins, uh, not stems, uh, tendrils of my pumpkins, I'm using these, uh, what I'm showing you, those are that I cut off of the pit berries. They're like the extra that you would throw away. Uh, and so I decided to keep those because I'm twirling those around and that is going to be the tendrils of my pumpkins. And so what I'm using is a curling tool. Now I do have also a link for that in my link tree. Uh, it is a, a wire curling tools tool, a sweet uh, friend and follower, Miss Jan Blackwell sent these to me. I use them all of the time. It has just a little slit in there where you can, you know, twist it around and really make something cool and curled. All right. So then what I did is I just took that jewel recording and uh, made about six loops, three on each side. Then I just cut off a piece of it and tied it off in the center. Then I just start layering my stuff together. I'm going to be using some uh, burlap, some trims, some pit berries. And uh, since these are small pumpkins, I don't want to like overdo it. So I just use a couple of pit berries. Then I just layer everything together and just make the bow. I used a piece of muslin fabric just to tie the bow on to the stem of the pumpkin. And then now to attach my tendrils, I just did that separately. Uh, I just, you know, 
just hot glued those tendrils underneath the bow so that they kind of stick out a little bit. One going one way and one going the other way just to give it a little bit of character. All right, so then to attach my letters to the to my blocks, what I used is my Fabri-Tac glue. And I used that, I just put a bead of that in the middle of the, uh, you know, letter. And so the Fabri-Tac glue gives a little bit of time to dry. And so if I needed to kind of move it around a little bit, if I maybe got it too high or too low, it gives me a little bit of lead time to, uh, you know, move it around. And so then I did end up going back and giving it a coat of a uh, sealer. My favorite sealer is this one right here. You can get it at the craft store or you can find it in my favorite Amazon. Uh, my link is in the link tree. That is where, you know, I have a lot of my favorite things and I'm just loving this. They're perfect for little shelf sitters or just something if you don't have a whole lot of space that you just want to decorate for the fall season. As I mentioned, today is a special video because it's a collaboration with my wonderful friend, Linda, who is Faith Chick 777 here on YouTube. She has a channel that is filled with tons of rustic country goodness and our styles are very similar and there are a lot of uh, friends that love both of our channels and we appreciate you so much. If you're not familiar with Linda, she does do a lot of country rustic different things. She also is amazing at sewing. She just is has such a knack for the details and I love that so much guys because you know I say that beauty is in the details and Linda does that as well. Linda also has the most wonderful heart and she shares it in each and every video by just an encouraging word, just something to that is very uplifting and that just really makes her community feel connected. I am so blessed to have her in my life. Now I will have Linda's channel as well as her video linked in the description box below. So if you're not already subscribed to her channel, please do because I know that you will love it as much as I do. All right, let's go ahead and get into the rest of the video. Next up is another version of a smashed can project for fall. Now, my mom had given me some gallon size cans and uh, so I you know, just removed the bottom of the can just with my smooth edge uh, can opener. And, you know, you can get the smooth edge cam and openers uh, in the store as well as on Amazon. And so um, that is the key uh, for me is to get those top and bottom lids off with a smooth edge can opener. Okay, guys, so what I've done is I have uh, this napkin that I got from Hobby Lobby, my favorite store. And so I'm going to Mod Podge that on. The napkin is, this particular napkin is a three ply, but I've only taken out one of the, uh, the plies. So I left the other white backing on there. I just took some Mod Podge and I just Mod Podge that on. Now, since this is a napkin, it's very delicate and very thin. So I had to be careful that I didn't tear it, which I did, but it was okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, for the bottom of the can, uh, so how I smash the bottom of the can is by, you know, kind of bending, pushing, bending, pushing, and then got my hammer and then just kind of smashed it as tight as I could, but I could not get it completely shut. Uh, I know I could have asked my husband to help or get, you know, something else that's a little bit heavier, but it gave me an idea to take this paper bag, tear it, uh, and use some distress ink and crumple it up just to give it some rustic touch and just kind of add a little bit of decoration. I used uh, that uh, piece of the paper bag just to do, you know, add some different touches 
to the bottom as well as the top. And so it kind of took me a little bit of time just to go back and forth, you know, to get it the right size. I just kept playing around with it, using my clamps just to clamp it down. I just had to be very careful because when I first put the one clamp down, it kind of was on the napkin and it kind of tore my napkin a little bit. So uh, just to get everything nice and secure, I just use a, uh, just a paintbrush and just paint it on the Mod Podge and I love it. I had to let it completely dry before I got into it a little more. Okay, so I have all of these fall florals that either came from Hobby Lobby um, or Dollar Tree. And so this right here is so pretty. It is a garland that came from Hobby Lobby. All right, so now what I'm showing you here is I, I put um, holes in the can just using my crop dial You can get these at the craft store or I do have them listed in my Amazon store. But guys, I, I put it, I wasn't thinking I did this and I, you know, put this wire on there thinking, oh yeah, that's where I need to put it because it needs to, you know, the way that it needs to like hang on my hook. No, I needed to, I, I'm later on in the video, I'm going to show you that I actually put the holes on the side of the can, silly girl, I wasn't even thinking. So I left this in here to show you that, yeah, I make mistakes too. I'm just, just like everyone else, you know, it's kind of trial and error as we go along and yeah, we just figure out things that work and things that don't. Okay. So then um, I put just one of those small blocks of styrofoam that I like to get from the Dollar Tree. I glued that in the bottom of the can using some Aline's tacky glue my favorite for this type of project and so then some of the florals uh, what I did is I just kind of stuck those in there just arranging it the way that it looks really pretty then when I get about halfway I pull out my fine excelsior and just kind of put that in the can so that it looks a bit whimsy then I'll continue to arrange my flowers the way that I want them and then I say, hey, you need some pit berries in here. So I pull out some of these white pit berries that I like to get. They come on a garland from Hobby Lobby. I take them off the garland, uh, put a steel pick on the end. And that is what helps me, you know, put those into, I uh, do a lot of wreaths and a lot of, uh, you know, different arrangement. And that really helps. And so for the bow, um, I've kind of torn off some pieces of muslin fabric. I have some burlap uh, that came from the Dollar Tree. I also have some other trims and laces and different things. And so also some raffia. Uh, a country project for me is not complete without some raffia. And so I just arrange that the way that I want. Now that burlap, it kind of is curly. And so it kind of like flows down really nicely. Uh, the finishing touch is using this jewel recording. I like to use that in my country projects and you can just get that at uh, any craft store or Walmart even has it as well. I make six loops, three on each side. I just tie a piece uh, off with it you know, just with that jewel recording, it really makes a really nice touch for my bows. Then what I'll do is I will just add some wire. Now this rusty wire is, um, I actually used Linda's technique. Y'all have heard me mention that before. She has a, a how to rust small metals, uh, you know, for, you know, different projects. And so I refer to her video all of the time because it is amazing. That is how I do to rust small metals like this. And so I just have some of this wire. I'm just twisting it. I use those curling uh, iron those curling tools that I refer to a lot. Uh, the link for those are in my description box. It is in my link tree. They're curling, um, wire curling tools. That's what it was. The name escaped me just for a second. And again, like I said, a sweet friend, Miss Jan Blackwell sent those to me. And so I do appreciate that. And so just by doing that, it just really kind of just adds a little bit of rustic touch to it. And I just love it so much. And so just to uh, glue the bow, I added some E6000 as well as some hot glue. And then that blue clip is something that I 
had left there just to clamp it so that it would dry. All right. So then now this is when I'm like discovering, oh girl, it's not hanging correctly. So I take my crocodile and I go back. Um, it's a little bit hard to kind of get in there because my styrofoam and all of my flowers and the stuff are in there. So, but I may do. And uh, then I just, you know, took out my, that gold wire that I got from Dollar Tree, I think, and just reposition it. So it looks really nice. And this turned out so pretty. I just love making these smashed can projects. And I know a lot of others do as well because I see them all over the internet on Google, Pinterest, as well as in the uh, Facebook groups. <laughs> Scarecrows, cute scarecrows, scream, fall to me. And so I decided to make another scarecrow. Now, what I've done is I've taken some uh, pieces of just board that I had on hand. Now, the bigger board that I'm going to make the scarecrow face came from Dollar Tree. And the this one that I'm working with now, that pack came from Hobby Lobby. And so I wanted to make that as part of the brim, but I wanted that jagged edge on the end and so I'm just kind of taking my scissors and just going back and forth I wasn't thinking I should have used my box blade to kind of help me help me uh, you know jag this up a bit more but you know it was already too late and I've already done it and so that is okay so uh, the board itself is too wide so I trim that down uh, just measure that out and use my box blade just you know scoring it back and forth and back and forth until I get the uh, board to break in half. For my scarecrow hat I am using the color curry which is a Waverly chalk paint that was just the gold color that I had on hand and wanted to use that. So I also paint the brim of the hat that same curry color. Now for the face I'm using the Waverly chalk paint color in uh, cashew is the color that I'm using. I've kind of got grown fond to this. I love it uh, for my scarecrow face and gave it a couple of coats of that. All right, so now I'm using a, a half inch flat paintbrush. Actually, this is more of a fourth of an inch flat paintbrush. And so I'm going to do some shading. I left this in here, guys, to show you that, um, first of all, I am human and I do make mistakes as far as when I'm painting uh, and I'm shading. Some of it doesn't come out too, too good. And even though I, you know, dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, and then I blend on a paper towel, sometimes it comes out a little, you know, too thick. And so then I just go back, use some of that paint and just kind of soften that up a bit because that black was just a little bit too too dark for me. All right, so then for the uh, shading of the brown around the scarecrow's face, I'm using the color milk chocolate as well as, uh, you know, some clean water. Then I go around and, you know, around the edges of it and I was just kind of have struggling with my shading this day when I was filming this. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to, you know, uh, sugarcoat it or anything. But anyway, so I share this with you only because I want to encourage anyone who wants to paint like this. Uh, you know, you're going to mess up. You know, I mess up. I've been doing this for, you know, 25 years. And so I just, you know, just go on and just figure out how I can correct my mistakes. So for my nose, I didn't have a triangle. So I just used a craft stick and cut that down uh, to a triangle to the size that I wanted. Then I gave it a coat of uh, burnt orange Americana paint uh, for my nose. Now for the cheeks, I like the more rectangle up and down cheeks. And I just use my uh, stenciling brush and some coral color paint, just stippling that on to get the 
darkness of the, uh, you know, the kind that I like. So to make a little bit more whimsy face, I use my uh, detailing brush. Now I get asked about this, about my liner brushes. Uh, my liner brushes or the key to a liner brush is get one that is very thin, take out some bristles, uh, something that, you know, you only has a few bristles because then that is, you know, makes it kind of thin so that you can make little lines like this. All right. So now I've done my eyes and I like the more almond shaped eyes as far. I like, um, you know, kind of touching at the top. Everyone's a little bit different. Uh, you know, you can get different, uh, patterns and different, uh, templates online. If you would like to, you know, figure out how to do a uh, little face like this. Okay, so then I use that little detailing brush just to make some eyelashes. And I did make some eyebrows, but I end up going back later and covering those up because my hat brim was going to cover those up. And so I'm like, eh, shouldn't even waste my time. All right, so for the small little scarecrow mouth, I just drew it out with a pencil, then just going back over it, just making it a little darker with my fine Sharpie marker. And then I'll just use that little detailing brush just to go and put some little stitch marks in there. I made just some little X's on this uh, this time, uh, but that's what I did just to bring the little character or the little snow, uh, not snowman. <laughs> I guess I got snowman on the brain, the little scarecrow, just to bring him to life. All right, so then I like to add a bit of uh, uh, white to the eyes just to bring them to life and give them a little bit of character. And depending on where I put my white of the eyes will kind of depend on which direction or which way he is looking. So then I just use the end of a paintbrush and some of that milk chocolate brown paint just to give a uh, some freckles for my my scarecrow. All right, to uh, hand letter the happy harvest, what I use is a uh, number two uh, flat paintbrush and this is in that uh, pack of my favorite paintbrushes. Now um, what I do is air draw it just to make sure that I you know have enough space and I'm using the color of paint uh, buttermilk which is an Americana paint but I just wanted a more off-white paint and so I just hand letter this and doing my happy dots. Now uh, I had forgotten that I wanted to uh, put some uh, maroon lines through it and so I go back later and add just some maroon lines you know just to tie in all the plaid pattern for my scarecrow <laughs> To make the plaid part of the hat, I'm using the color Napa Red and the flat paintbrush I'm using is out of the, my favorite paintbrushes, uh, the number eight flat paintbrush. That's the one that I'm using for this uh, to make this plaid pattern. And so, you know, I'm just freehanding this just to make some stripes. And so I'll show you in just a minute. You know, I thought I had it measured out the way that I wanted it to but uh, it was just going to be a little bit too close and so it's okay because with the beauty is in the details and we just figure out what works best for us and how we can hide our mistakes and so uh, I just continue to you know put my stripes like that I actually should have put those I measured those a little bit different uh, because once I measured like figured out where I needed my brim to go it was not it was only going to show that one uh, stripe at the top you know going uh, across the top and I wanted two to show. All right, so then to add some of the off-white color, I'm just using my liner brush and just put that in there, uh, you know, in between just to, you know, give it the plaid pattern. All right, so this is where I was talking about. I had forgotten that I wanted to put in a little bit of that maroon color or the Napa red. And so I just use my detailing brush just to go back through and just add some of the uh, red maroon 
and stripes just to tie everything in together. All right, so then um, now I'm just taking that liner brush and just going in each of the uh, bubbles uh, or the happy dots just to, you know, bring them out to life and, you know, just bring them out, I guess is what I'm trying to say, and just give them some character. All right, I'm using my fine Sharpie marker to add some doodling. And I love this because it just really uh, feel that, or I feel that it just brings my projects to life. You know, as I say, you hear me say this all the time, the beauty is in the details, the shading, the uh, black Sharpie marker, just everything just brings everything out to life. And so I like to use a fine tip Sharpie marker as well as an ultra fine uh, tip Sharpie marker. One is a little bit thinner. And so that gives me the really thin lines that I like. And so then of course, I am going to paint splatter everything. And I will do that just using my uh, stencil brush as well as a stick. And then I run the stick over the bristles toward my body. Uh, then that just projects the paint onto the um, you know, to the project. And so I always, you know, I get questions about that is, you know, how do you do this? What can you use? Can you use a toothbrush? Can you, you know, an old toothbrush? Can you use your fingers? Absolutely. Whatever works for you is great. And so I'll just continue uh, to add some doodling and some shading and some squiggles to my project. Once my paint and everything was completely dry, I take my sanding sponge and just run it over uh, the painted parts and just to expose a bit of the wood and just kind of take the brightness off of the uh, painted part of the scarecrow hat because I wanted it a little bit more muted. And then I just use my uh, black fine point Sharpie marker just to go around each of the letters just to give them a little bit of character and just to bring them out. For uh, hair for my scarecrow, I'm using some raffia and I like to use the raffia from Walmart. And so for this uh, small scarecrow, when I'm, you know, just kind of laying some raffia out and I just use clips to help me along. And so I tie it off at the top and then just, I don't stress about, um, you know, what it looks like before I I'm going to give it a haircut. And so I just tie it off, you know, at the top so that it kind of stays halfway together. And then I just glue that on there like that. Now, you know, for your scarecrow, there's so many different ways, you know, or so many different things that you can use, um, or ways that, you know, people make hair and that kind of thing. But this is just what works for me. I just tie off different pieces and just glue them on, uh, just making sure that everything you know, kind of sticks out, uh, sticks out from the hat that looks like it's sticking out from the hat and it's very rustic and very country and just, you know, just looks really scarecrow y. <laughs> That's not even a word. Uh, anyway, so to make sure that everything is, uh, is secure, I use E6000 as well as hot glue to glue that brim on there. And so then the way that I had painted it, yeah, it was already going to cover up my eyebrows. So I that's why I didn't even worry about any eyebrows. And so then now I'm, you know, give it a little haircut. And my little scarecrow is so cute. Now what my plan is, uh, later on, I will show you in a different video. I'm going to make, um, he is going to be on a, a small sign for a wreath. And so I will definitely show y'all that, you know, in a, in a later video. Uh, so you can check for that on my channel.
I just love painting this. Now I do have another collection video of little whimsical faces like this because I love this, you know, from bunnies to, you know, uh, Santas to Halloween characters to so many different things. I just love making these cute little faces. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I had an awesome time collaborating with my sweet friend, Linda, who is Faith Chick 777 DIY by Design. Don't forget to check out her video in this collaboration as well as her channel. Thanks guys so much. I appreciate you all. God bless you. We will see you in the next video.